Radiators are used for cooling internal combustion engines. To cool down the engine heat, a coolant is passed through the engine block, where it absorbs heat from the engine. The hot coolant is then fed into the inlet tank of the radiator and is distributed across the radiator core through tubes. As the coolant passes through the radiator tubes, it transfers much of its heat to the tubes, which, in turn, transfer the heat to the fins, which are lodged between each row of tubes. The fins then release the heat to the ambient air. Fins are used to greatly increase the contact surface of the tubes to the air, thus increasing the exchange efficiency. The cooled coolant is fed back to the engine, and the cycle repeats. As the engine coolant heats, it expands, increasing the pressure inside of the cooling system. The radiator cap controls this expansion and maintains a constant pressure inside of the system. A cooling system generally has around 15 pounds per square inch, plus or minus, depending on the manufacturer. As coolant pressure rises, the boiling point also rises, allowing vehicles to operate at higher temperatures. The cap also allows the coolant to expand and contract without introducing air into the system. As coolant expands, it is routed to the overflow tank via the radiator cap. As the engine cools, the cap allows coolant to flow from the overflow tank back to the radiator. The thermostat is like a valve that opens and closes as a function of its temperature. The thermostat isolates the engine from the radiator until it has reached a certain minimum temperature. Without a thermostat, the engine would always lose heat to the radiator and take longer to warm up. Once the engine has reached the desired operating temperature, the thermostat adjusts flow to the radiator to maintain a stable temperature. A water pump is vital to a car engine's operation. It ensures the coolant keeps moving through the cooling system and maintains an optimum operating temperature. It is driven by a belt, either a serpentine belt or the timing belt. A car's water pump uses impeller blades and centrifugal force to circulate the coolant throughout the cooling system. Basically, the water pump's primary function is to circulate the coolant throughout the cooling system. The radiator fan, or fans, pulls cooling air through the car's radiator. Fans are positioned between the radiator and engine. Cooling fans are particularly helpful when the car is stationary, or, moving at speeds too slow to force air through the grill. The advent of electric cooling fans, which turn on and off as needed, proved an improvement over engine-driven fans that slow down exactly when they're needed most. Radiator and heater hoses are integral to your engine's cooling system. While both are comprised of the same material, soft, pliable rubber, each hose has a different function. Radiator hoses are connected to both the radiator and engine to direct coolant to the radiator so it can be cooled, and then back into the engine so it can maintain a certain temperature, preventing overheating. Heater hoses are used to transfer heated coolant into the vehicle's heating unit or heater core. Engine coolant, also known as antifreeze, is mixed with water to keep the radiator from freezing in extreme cold and overheating in extreme heat. Different vehicles require different coolants. There are varieties for every type of vehicle, from diesel engines to American, Asian and European vehicles. Each one is specifically formulated to keep its designated engine type running in extreme temperatures. It's important that you get the correct antifreeze for your vehicle. A heater core is a small radiator located under the dashboard of the vehicle. It consists of conductive aluminium or brass tubing with cooling fins to increase surface area. Hot coolant passing through the heater core gives off heat before returning to the engine cooling circuit. The interior fan of the vehicle's ventilation system forces air through the heater core to transfer heat from the coolant to the cabin air, which is directed into the vehicle through vents at various points. An expansion tank, also known as an overflow bottle, is also used in the cooling system of most internal combustion engines, to allow the coolant in the system to expand with rising temperature and pressure. The tank is also called a coolant recovery tank, since it prevents venting and permanent loss of coolant, by allowing it to be sucked back into the cooling system as the engine cools. Low coolant levels will cause the engine to overheat. 
Low coolant levels can cause the engine temperature to rise while sitting idling at a red light or drive through for example, then drop to normal engine temperatures when you start driving again. If the coolant level is low enough, the engine will overheat due pretty quickly and can cause severe engine damage. If your coolant levels are low, check for a leak and repair as necessary. Be extremely careful when removing a cooling system component when the vehicle is hot. The system is under pressure and will burn you if you are not careful. Always allow the engine to cool before opening the cooling system or removing the radiator cap. When a radiator problem is causing your engine to overheat, one of the first things you should check is the radiator fan and all of the fan parts. If your fan isn't working correctly due to a broken fan blade, bad connection, or being worn out, this can prevent the radiator from reducing the coolant temperature adequately. If you notice your cooling fans not coming on, you should troubleshoot the reason, then make any necessary repairs before severe engine damages occur due to overheating. Be careful when working on fans. Electric fans can turn on even when the vehicle is turned off. Never stick your fingers in the area where the blades could cut you. A sticking thermostat is a serious problem. The thermostat manages the amount of coolant that is distributed through the engine. If a thermostat is stuck open, that means it is overcooling or if it's stuck shut, it's not cooling the engine enough. One sign of this is an erratic temperature gauge where the engine goes up and then down in thermal temperature. An occasional check engine light can be another sign of this problem. If you suspect the thermostat to be sticking, it should be replaced to avoid severe engine damage. The best radiator in the world will not perform if it doesn't have the proper air flow through the core. A visual inspection should be conducted to check for any debris that could be blocking the air flow through the radiator and condenser on most vehicles. The condenser is a part of the air condition system that resembles the radiator. The air flow must go through the condenser and radiator. Any restriction will cause improper air flow. As long as there is enough air flow through the radiator, the engine will stay cool. If for some reason the air flow rate is too low, the radiator won't do its job and the engine may overheat. If there is debris in the radiator or condenser that is restricting air flow, it must be cleaned before severe engine damage occurs due to overheating. When your radiator cap does not seal properly, air could make its way inside of the cooling system. This will cause air pockets to get inside of the heater core, thermostat, and radiator hoses. As a result, the engine will start to overheat because it cannot sustain a temperature that is consistent. Some signs of a bad radiator cap include, air in the system, leaking coolant, overflowing overflow bottle, radiator hoses collapsing, overheated engine. If you suspect in bad radiator cap, replace it to prevent severe engine damage due to overheating conditions. And again, never remove a radiator cap when the engine is hot. The coolant will blow out and you could get severely burned. If you found this video helpful, consider hitting that like button. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos by hitting that subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section below if you have experienced an overheating issue. See you next time.